We misunderstand wind. Sometimes it does not let us read. Sometimes it ruins our hairstyles. Then there are windstorms and twisters which destroy our homes. But this immense power in wind has a great advantage too. In this episode of Plan B, we unleash wind power. In actual, wind energy is solar energy. Wind energy is created by the uneven heating of the Earth's surface by the sun. Whether it is a wind farm in Minnesota or a small village in Sindh or the backyard of a German farmer, wind energy works today in a variety of applications in the world. In the year 1997, the world total installed capacity for wind energy was around 7,500 megawatts. It grew to 121,000 megawatts in 2008. And in the year 2010, it is expected to grow to 190,000 megawatts. The United States of America currently tops the list of world wind energy producers. It is followed by Germany. Pakistan's strong point is its coastline. 1,046 kilometers of breezy beaches with a flat terrain, ideal for harvesting wind energy. You can't put windmills for production of electricity unless you have certain basic data. Initial surveys carried out at our coastal belt pointed towards a wind corridor. This caused quite a bit of a stir. Banking on this hope, the Ministry of Science and Technology provided funds to Pakistan Meteorological Department to establish a network of wind masts along the coastal areas. This is where the whole story begins. This is a wind mapping tower which measures three things. The wind velocity, wind direction and the temperature. There are 50 of these which are installed by the Pakistan Met Office in the wind corridors of Sindh and Balochistan. This particular one has got two sensors. One is at a height of 30 feet and the other one is at a height of 100 feet. The data collected by these becomes the basics of any wind energy project. I had initiated a project when I became the Minister for Science and Technology in the year 2000 to do a wind mapping of Pakistan and the Pakistan Meteorological Department was entrusted to do this and they collected this data for a period of two years. And I collected the data from 26 stations which were collecting wind data at 2 meters, 3 meters, 5 meters. And I extrapolated it for 30 meters. What we identified, and this was a very exciting uh, discovery. So we found that there was wind corridor in Sin. Haro Keti Bandar area where we found the most suitable place to install windmills. That's about 70 kilometers wide and about 170 kilometers in depth. Further analysis of this wind regime showed a very promising exploitable wind energy potential of more than 50,000 megawatts. 50,000 megawatts. 40 to 50,000 megawatts. Up to 50,000 megawatts. 50,000 megawatts of wind energy. 50,000 megawatts became the buzzword. Every newspaper in the country started highlighting the number and it was stated that Pakistan's energy crisis will soon come to an end. But the data needed to be verified. Um, the Met Department has worked, but they had not worked on the same heights that, uh, that we are looking at, uh, the turbine heights now. We asked NREL, National Renewable Energy Laboratories of the United States, they did all the wind mapping in that area. I mean, the whole Pakistan. In order to get an estimate of the wind resources in Pakistan, we again, we had to rely on numerical models that uh, have been shown to be quite effective in, dis in, in dis displaying the distribution of wind energy potential throughout a large region. Their results further strengthened Pakistan's position. And we found, again, several thousand megawatts of wind energy potential available to the country, probably much larger than what the total energy 
uh, current total energy demand is for the country. It is not 50,000 megawatt, it is 110,000 megawatt because I was more conservative. Wind potential from the same corridor was being harnessed by India as well. Wind would go right through Rajasthan into India. Now, India had uh, more than 200, 300 megawatts being produced there. Moreover, the NREL wind map also depicts the presence of several other potential areas in the west of Balochistan, Upper Punjab and the northern areas of Pakistan. Our alternative energy organizations set high targets for themselves. Initially what they had expected was by the year 2010 and they would produce about 7,000 megawatts. I said, sorry, 700 megawatts. And on the medium term, the target went to 3,730 megawatts by the year 2020. Okay, the target for 2030 was that 5% of our total energy mix will come from renewable energy. Data was also sent to RISO National Laboratory of Denmark, but RISO pointed out some issues. 